Padua, Italian, Padova, Padova, listen, Venetian, Padova, is a city and commune in Veneto, northern Italy. It is the capital of the province of Padua and the economic and communications hub of the area. Padua's population is 214,000, as of 2011. The city is sometimes included, with Venice, Italian Venezia, and Treviso, in the Padua Treviso Venice metropolitan area, P-A-T-R-E-V-E, which has a population of c. 2,600,000. Padua stands on the Bacchiglione River, 40 kilometers 25 miles west of Venice and 29 kilometers 18 miles southeast of Vicenza. The Brenta River, which once ran through the city, still touches the northern districts. Its agricultural setting is the Venetian plain, Pianera Veneta. To the city's southwest lies the Uganean hills, praised by Lucan and Marshall, Petrarch, Hugo Foscolo, and Shelley. It hosts the University of Padua, founded in 1222, where Galileo Galilei was a lecturer. The city is picturesque, with a dense network of arcaded streets opening into large communal pias, and many bridges crossing the various branches of the Bacchiglione, which once surrounded the ancient walls like a moat. Padua is the setting for most of the action in Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. There is a play by the Victorian writer Oscar Wilde entitled The Duchess of Padua. The city is also known for being the city where St. Anthony, a Portuguese Franciscan, Anthony of Padua, also known as Anthony of Lisbon, city where he was born in 1195, spent part of his life and died in 1231. Etymology the original significance of the Roman name Patavium, Venetian, Padoa, German Padua, is uncertain. It may be connected with the ancient name of the river Po, Padus. Additionally, the root Pat, in the Indo-European language may refer to a wide open plain as opposed to nearby hills, in Latin this root is present in the word patera which means plate, and the verb pater means to open. The suffix avenue, also found in the name of the rivers such as the Timavis and Tiliaventum is likely of Venetic origin, precisely indicating the presence of a river, which in the case of Padua is the Brenta. The ending ium, signifies the presence of villages that have united themselves together. History Antiquity Padua claims to be the oldest city in northern Italy. According to a tradition dated at least to the time of Virgil's Aeneid and to Livy's A Flat Urba Candida, Padua was founded in around 1183 BC by the Trojan prince Antinor. After the fall of Troy, Antinor led a group of Trojans and their Paphlagonian allies, the Eneti or Veneti, who lost their king Polemenes to settle the Euganian plain in Italy. Thus, when a large ancient stone sarcophagus was exhumed in the year 1274, officials of the medieval commune declared the remains within to be those of Antinor. An inscription by the native humanist scholar Lovato dei Lovati placed near the tomb reads, This sepulchre excavated from marble contains the body of the noble Antinor who left his country, guided the Eneti and Trojans, banished the Euganians and founded Padua. However, more recent tests suggest the sepulchre dates to the between the 4th and 3rd centuries BC. Nevertheless, archaeological remains confirm an early date for the foundation of the center of the town to between the 11th and 10th centuries BC. By the 5th century BC, Padua, rose on the banks of the river Brenta, which in the Roman era was called Medoicus Maior and probably until AD 589 followed the path of the present-day Bacchiglione Retron. Padua was one of the principal centers of the Veneti. The Roman historian Livy records an attempted invasion by the Spartan king Cleonimos around 302 BC. The Spartans came up the river but were defeated by the Veneti in a naval battle and gave up the idea of conquest. Still later, the Veneti of Padua successfully repulsed invasions by the Etruscans and Gauls. According to Livy and Silius Italicus, the Veneti, including those of Padua, formed an alliance with the Romans by 226 BC against their common enemies, first the Gauls and then the Carthaginians. Men from Padua fought and died beside the Romans at Cannae. With Rome's northwards expansion, Padua was gradually assimilated into the Roman Republic. 
In 175 BC, Padua requested the aid of Rome in putting down a local civil war. In 91 BC, Padua, along with other cities of the Veneti, fought with Rome against the rebels in the Social War. Around 49, or 45 or 43, BC, Padua was made a Roman municipium under the Lex Julia Municipalis and its citizens ascribed to the Roman tribe, Fabia. At that time the population of the city was perhaps 40,000. The city was reputed for its excellent breed of horses and the wool of its sheep. In fact, the poet Marshall remarks on the thickness of the tunics made there. By the end of the 1st century BC, Padua seems to have been the wealthiest city in Italy outside of Rome. The city became so powerful that it was reportedly able to raise 200,000 fighting men. However, despite its wealth, the city was also renowned for its simple manners and strict morality. This concern with morality is reflected in Livy's Roman History XLIII.13.2, wherein he portrays Rome's rise to dominance as being founded upon her moral rectitude and discipline. Still later, Pliny, referring to one of his Paduan protégés, Paduan grandmother, Serana Procula, lauds her as more upright and disciplined than any of her strict fellow citizens. Epist. I. Z. Padua also provided the empire with notable intellectuals. Nearby Abano was the birthplace, and after many years spent in Rome, the deathplace of Livy, whose Latin was said by the critic Asinius Pollio to betray his Padovinidas Q. V. Quintilian, Inst. or B. I.3. Padua was also the birthplace of Thrasiopetus, Asconius Pedianus, and perhaps Valerius Flaccus. Christianity was introduced to Padua and much of the Veneto by St. Prostosimus. He is venerated as the first bishop of the city. His deacon, the Jewish convert Daniel, is also a saintly patron of the city. Late Antiquity the history of Padua during late antiquity follows the course of events common to most cities of northeastern Italy. Padua suffered from the invasion of the Huns and was savagely sacked by Attila in 450. A number of years afterward, it fell under the control of the Gothic kings Odoacer and Theodoric the Great. It was reconquered for a short time by the Byzantine Empire in 540 during the Gothic War. However, depopulation from plague and war ensued. The city was again seized by the Goths under Totila, but was restored to the Eastern Empire by Narses only to fall under the control of the Lombards in 568. During these years, many of Paduans sought safety in the countryside and especially in the nearby lagoons of what would become Venice. In 601, the city rose in revolt against Agilulf, the Lombard king who put the city under siege. After enduring a 12-year-long bloody siege, the Lombards stormed and burned the city. Many ancient artifacts and building were seriously damaged. The remains of an amphitheater, the arena, and some bridge foundations are all that remain of Roman Padua today. The townspeople fled to the hills and later returned to eke out a living among the ruins. The ruling class abandoned the city for the Venetian lagoon, according to a chronicle. The city did not easily recover from this blow, and Padua was still weak when the Franks succeeded the Lombards as masters of northern Italy. Frankish and Episcopal Supremacy At the Diet of Aix-la-Chapelle, 828, the Duchy and March of Friuli, in which Padua lay, was divided into four counties, one of which took its title from the city of Padua. The end of the early Middle Ages at Padua was marked by the sack of the city by the Magyars in 899. It was many years before Padua recovered from this ravage. During the period of episcopal supremacy over the cities of northern Italy, Padua does not appear to have been either very important or very active. The general tendency of its policy throughout the War of Investitures was imperial Ghibelline, and not Roman Guelph, and its bishops were, for the most part, of German extraction. Emergence of the Commune under the surface, several important movements were taking place that were to prove formative for the later development of Padua. At the beginning of the 11th century the citizens established a constitution, composed of a general council or legislative assembly and a credenza or executive body. 
During the next century they were engaged in wars with Venice and Vicenza for the right of waterway on the Bacchiglione and the Brenta. The city grew in power and self-confidence and in 1138, government was entrusted to two consuls. The great families of Campo Sampiero, Este and Da Romano began to emerge and to divide the Paduan district among themselves. The citizens, in order to protect their liberties, were obliged to elect a Podesta in 1178. Their choice first fell on one of the Este family. A fire devastated Padua in 1174. This required the virtual rebuilding of the city. The temporary success of the Lombard League helped to strengthen the towns. However, their civic jealousy soon reduced them to weakness again. As a result, in 1236 Frederick II found little difficulty in establishing his vicar Ezzelino III da Romano in Padua and the neighboring cities, where he practiced frightful cruelties on the inhabitants. Ezzelino was unseated in June 1256 without civilian bloodshed, thanks to Pope Alexander IV. Padua then enjoyed a period of calm and prosperity, the Basilica of the Saint was begun, and the Paduans became masters of Vicenza. The University of Padua, the second university in Italy, after Bologna, was founded in 1222, and as it flourished in the 13th century, Padua outpaced Bologna, where no effort had been made to expand the revival of classical precedents beyond the field of jurisprudence, to become a center of early humanist researches, with a first-hand knowledge of Roman poets that was unrivaled in Italy or beyond the Alps. However, the advances of Padua in the 13th century finally brought the commune into conflict with Con Grande della Scala, Lord of Verona. In 1311 Padua had to yield to the Scaligeri of Verona. Jacopo da Carrara was elected Lord of Padua in 1318, at that point the city was home to 40,000 people. From then till 1405, nine members of the moderately enlightened Carraresi family, including Ubertino, Jacopo II, and Francesco Il Vecchio, succeeded one another as lords of the city, with the exception of a brief period of scaligeri overlordship between 1328 and 1337 and two years 1388 to 1390, when John Galeazzo Visconti held the town. The Carraresi period was a long period of restlessness, for the Carraresi were constantly at war. Under Cararese rule the early humanist circles in the university were effectively disbanded. Albertino Masato, the first modern poet laureate, died in exile at Chioga in 1329, and the eventual heir of the Paduan tradition was the Tuscan Petrarch. In 1387 John Hawkwood won the Battle of Castagnaro for Padua, against Giovanni Ortlaffi, for Verona. The Cararese period finally came to an end as the power of the Visconti and of Venice grew in importance. Venetian rule Padua came under the rule of the Republic of Venice in 1405, and mostly remained that way until the fall of the Republic of Venice in 1797. There was just a brief period when the city changed hands, in 1509, during the wars of the League of Cambrai. On 10 December 1508, representatives of the papacy, France, the Holy Roman Empire, and Ferdinand I of Spain concluded the League of Cambrai against the Republic. The agreement provided for the complete dismemberment of Venice's territory in Italy and for its partition among the signatories. Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I of the House of Habsburg was to receive Padua in addition to Verona and other territories. In 1509 Padua was held for just a few weeks by imperial supporters. Venetian troops quickly recovered it and successfully defended Padua during a siege by imperial troops, Siege of Padua. The city was governed by two Venetian nobles, a podesta for civil affairs and a captain for military affairs. Each was elected for 16 months. Under these governors, the great and small councils continued to discharge municipal business and to administer the Paduan law contained in the statutes of 1276 and 1362. The treasury was managed by two chamberlains, and every five years the Paduans sent one of their nobles to reside as nuncio in Venice, and to watch the interests of his native town. Venice fortified Padua with new walls, built between 1507 and 1544, with a series of monumental gates. Austrian rule in 1797 the Venetian Republic came to an end with the Treaty of Campo Formio, and Padua, like much of the Veneto, was ceded to the Habsburgs. 
In 1806 the city then passed to the French puppet Kingdom of Italy until the fall of Napoleon. In 1814, when the city became part of the newly formed Kingdom of Lombardy Venetia, part of the Austrian Empire. Austrian rule was unpopular with progressive circles in northern Italy, but the feelings of the population from the lower to the upper classes towards the empire were mixed. In Padua, the year of revolutions of 1848 saw a student revolt which on 8 February turned the university and the Café Pedrochi into battlegrounds in which students and ordinary Paduans fought side by side. The revolt was however short-lived, and there were no other episodes of unrest under the Austrian Empire, nor previously had there been any, as in Venice or in other parts of Italy, while opponents of Austria were forced into exile. Under Austrian rule, Padua began its industrial development. One of the first Italian rail tracks, Padua-Venice, was built in 1845. In 1866 the Battle of Konigratz gave Italy the opportunity, as an ally of Prussia, to take Veneto, and Padua was also annexed to the recently formed Kingdom of Italy. Italian rule Annexed to Italy during 1866, Padua was at the center of the poorest area of northern Italy, as Veneto was until the 1960s. Despite this, the city flourished in the following decades both economically and socially, developing its industry, being an important agricultural market and having a very important cultural and technological center as the university. The city hosted also a major military command and many regiments. The 20th century when Italy entered World War I on 24 May 1915, Padua was chosen as the main command of the Italian army. The king, Vittorio Emanuele III, and the commander-in-chief, Cadorna, went to live in Padua for the period of the war. After the defeat of Italy in the Battle of Caporetto in autumn 1917, the front line was situated on the river Piave. This was just 50 to 60 kilometers 31 to 37 miles from Padua, and the city was now in range of the Austrian artillery. However, the Italian military command did not withdraw. The city was bombed several times, about 100 civilian deaths. A memorable feat was Gabriele D. Annunzio's flight to Vienna from the nearby San Pelagio Castle airfield. A year later, the threat to Padua was removed. In late October 1918, the Italian army won the decisive Battle of Vittorio Veneto, and the Austrian forces collapsed. The armistice was signed at Villa Giusti, Padua, on 3 November 1918. During the war, industry grew rapidly, and this provided Padua with a base for further post-war development. In the years immediately following World War I, Padua developed outside the historical town, enlarging and growing in population, even if labor and social strife were rampant at the time. As in many other areas in Italy, Padua experienced great social turmoil in the years immediately following World War I. The city was shaken by strikes and clashes, factories and fields were subject to occupation, and war veterans struggled to re-enter civilian life. Many supported a new political way, fascism. As in other parts of Italy, the National Fascist Party in Padua soon came to be seen as the defender of property and order against revolution. The city was also the site of one of the largest fascist mass rallies, with some 300,000 people reportedly attending one speech by Benito Mussolini. New buildings, in typical fascist architecture, sprang up in the city. Examples can be found today in the buildings surrounding Piazza Spallato, today Piazza Insurrezioni, the railway station, the new part of City Hall, and part of the Bow Palace hosting the university. Following Italy's defeat in the Second World War on 8 September 1943, Padua became part of the Italian Social Republic, a puppet state of the Nazi occupiers. The city hosted the Ministry of Public Instruction of the new state, as well as military and militia commands and a military airport. The Resistenza, the Italian partisans, was very active against both the new fascist rule and the Nazis. One of the main leaders of the Resistenza in the area was the university vice-chancellor Concetto Marchesi. Padua was bombed several times by Allied planes. The worst hit areas were the railway station and the northern district of Arcella. 
During one of these bombings, the Church of the Aramitani, with frescoes by Andrea Montegna, was destroyed, considered by some art historians to be Italy's biggest wartime cultural loss. The city was finally liberated by partisans and New Zealand troops, 2nd New Zealand Division of the British 8th Army on the 28th of April 1945. A small Commonwealth War Cemetery is located in the west part of the city, commemorating the sacrifice of these troops. After the war, the city developed rapidly, reflecting Veneto's rise from being the poorest region in northern Italy to one of the richest and most economically active regions of modern Italy. Geography Climate Padua experiences a humid subtropical climate, Köppen climate classification CFA, characteristic of northern Italy, modified by the nearby Adriatic Sea. Main sites The Scrovegni Chapel Italian, Cappella degli Scrovegni, is Padua's most notable site. It houses a cycle of frescoes completed in 1305 by Giotto. It was commissioned by Enrico degli Scrovegni, a wealthy banker, as a private chapel once attached to his family's palazzo. It is also called the Arena Chapel because it stands on the site of a Roman-era arena. The fresco cycle details the life of the Virgin Mary and has been acknowledged by many to be one of the most important fresco cycles in the world for its role in the development of European painting. It also includes one of the earliest representations of a kiss in the history of art meeting at the Golden Gate 1305. Entrance to the chapel is an elaborate ordeal, as it involves spending 15 minutes prior to entrance in a climate-controlled, airlocked vault, used to stabilize the temperature between the outside world and the inside of the chapel. This is intended to protect the frescoes from moisture and mold. The Palazzo della Ragione, with its great hall on the upper floor, is reputed to have the largest roof unsupported by columns in Europe. The hall is nearly rectangular, its length 81.5 meters, 267.39 feet, its breadth 27 meters, 88.58 feet, and its height 24 meters, 78.74 feet. The walls are covered with allegorical frescoes, the building stands upon arches, and the upper story is surrounded by an open loggia, not unlike that which surrounds the basilica. Of Vicenza. The palazzo was begun in 1172 and finished in 1219. In 1306, Fra Giovanni, an Augustinian friar, covered the whole with one roof. Originally there were three roofs, spanning the three chambers into which the hall was at first divided. The internal partition walls remained till the fire of 1420, when the Venetian architects who undertook the restoration removed them, throwing all three spaces into one and forming the present great hall, the Salonè. The new space was refrescoed by Niccolo, Moretto and Stefano da Ferrara, working from 1425 to 1440. Beneath the Great Hall, there is a centuries-old market. In the Piazza dei Signori is the loggia called the Gran Guardia, 1493 to 1526, and close by is the Palazzo del Capitaniato, the residence of the Venetian governors, with its great door. The work of Giovanni Maria Falconetto, the Veronese architect sculptor who introduced Renaissance architecture to Padua and who completed the door in 1532. Falconetto was the architect of Alves Cornaro. S. Garden Loggia, Loggia Cornaro, the first fully Renaissance building in Padua. Nearby stands the cathedral, remodeled in 1552 after a design of Michelangelo. It contains works by Niccolo Semiticolo, Francesco Bassano and Giorgio Schiavone. The nearby baptistry, consecrated in 1281, houses the most important frescoes cycle by Giusto de Menabu Oi. The Teatro Verdi is host to performances of operas, musicals, plays, ballets, and concerts. The most celebrated of the Paduan churches is the Basilica di Sant'Antonio da Padova, locally known as Il Santo. The bones of the saint rest in a chapel richly ornamented with carved marble, the work of various artists, among them Sansovino and Falconetto. The basilica was begun around the year 1230 and completed in the following century. Tradition says that the building was designed by Nicola Pisano. It is covered by seven cupolas, two of them pyramidal. There are also four cloisters. The bell tower has eight bells in seat. Donatello. 
S equestrian statue of the Venetian general Gattamalata Erasmo da Narni can be found on the piazza in front of the Basilica di San Antonio da Padova. It was cast in 1453, and was the first full-size equestrian bronze cast since antiquity. It was inspired by the Marcus Aurelius equestrian sculpture at the Capitoline Hill in Rome. Not far from the Gattamalata statue are the St. George Oratori 13th century, with frescoes by Altichiero, and the Scuola di S. Antonio 16th century, with frescoes by Tiziano Titian. One of the best-known symbols of Padua is the Prado della Valle, a 90,000 square meters (968,751.94 square feet) elliptical square. This is one of the biggest in Europe. In the center is a wide garden surrounded by a ditch, which is lined by 78 statues portraying illustrious citizens. It was created by Andrea Memo in the late 18th century. Memo once resided in the monumental 15th century Palazzo Angeli, which now houses the Museum of Persinima. Abbey of Santa Justina and adjacent basilica. In the 15th century, it became one of the most important monasteries in the area, until it was suppressed by Napoleon in 1810. In 1919 it was reopened. The tombs of several saints are housed in the interior, including those of Justine, St. Prostosimus, St. Maximus, St. Urias, St. Felicita, St. Julianus, as well as relics of the Apostle Street Matthias and the Evangelist St. Luke. This is home to some art, including the martyrdom of St. Justine by Paolo Veronese. The complex was founded in the 5th century on the tomb of the namesake saint, Justine of Padua. The bell tower has eight bells in B. The Church of the Arimitani is an Augustinian church of the 13th century, containing the tombs of Jacopo and Ubertinello da Carrara, lords of Padua, and the chapel of S.S. James and Christopher, formerly illustrated by Montaigne's frescoes. This was largely destroyed by the Allies in World War II, because it was next to the Nazi headquarters. The old monastery of the church now houses the Musei Savici di Padova Town Archaeologic and Art Museum. Santa Sofia is probably Padova's most ancient church. The crypt was begun in the late 10th century by Venetian craftsmen. It has a basilica plan with Romanesque Gothic interior and Byzantine elements. The apse was built in the 12th century. The edifice appears to be tilting slightly due to the soft terrain. The Church of San Gaetano (1574–1586) was designed by Vincenzo Scamozzi on an unusual octagonal plan. The interior, decorated with polychrome marbles, houses a Madonna and Child by Andrea Briosco, in Nanto stone. The 16th century, Baroque, Padua Synagogue At the center of the historical city, the buildings of Palazzo del Bo, the center of the university The city hall, called Palazzo Moroni, the wall of which is covered by the names of the Paduan dead in the different wars of Italy and which is attached to the Palazzo della Ragione. The Café Pedrochi, built in 1831 by architect Giuseppe Giappelli in neoclassical style with Egyptian influence. This café has been open for almost two centuries. It hosts the Risorgimento Museum, and the near building of the Pedrochino, Little Pedrochi, in neo-Gothic style. The city center is surrounded by the 11 km long miles city walls, built during the early 16th century, by architects that include Michel Sanmicheli. There are only a few ruins left, together with two gates, of the smaller and inner 13th century walls. There is also a castle, the Castello. Its main tower was transformed between 1767 and 1777 into an astronomical observatory known as Specola. However the other buildings were used as prisons during the 19th and 20th centuries. They are now being restored. The Ponte San Lorenzo, a Roman bridge largely underground, along with the ancient Ponte Molino, Ponte Altanet, Ponte Corvo and Ponte S. Mateo. Villas In the neighborhood of Padua are numerous noble villas. These include Villa Molin, in the Mandria Fraction, designed by Vincenzo Scamozzi in 1597. Villa Mandriola, 17th century, at Alvignasego Villa Pascherati Trieste, 17th century, at Lamena 
Villa Cittadella Vigodarzir, 19th century, at Sayonara Villa Selvatico da Porto, 15th-18th century, at Viganza Villa Lorden, at Santurbano Villa Contarini, at Piazzola Sul Brenta, built in 1546 by Palladio and enlarged in the following centuries, is the most important. Churches Padua's historic core, includes numerous churches of significant architecture and arts. These include Basilica of St. Anthony of Padua. Built in 1235. San Clemente. Built in 1190. Santa Croce, Padua. Built in 1737. Church of St. Daniel of Padua. Completed in 1076. Church of the Aramitani. Built in 1276. Church of St. Francis. Consecrated in 1430. San Gaetano Church. Built in 1574-1576. Abbey Church of Santa Justina. The first church was built in 520, expanded in 1050. Basilica Cathedral of the Assumption of St. Mary, Padua Cathedral is the fourth structure on this site, built in 1551. Santa Maria dei Servi, dedicated in 1511. Scrovegni Chapel, consecrated in 1305. Church of St. Sophia, 10th century. Oratory of St. George, built 1376-77. Gallery Culture Padua has long been acclaimed for its university, founded in 1222. Under the rule of Venice the university was governed by a board of three patricians, called the Reformatory dello Studio di Padova. The list of notable professors and alumni is long, containing, among others, the names of Bembo, Sperone Speroni, the anatomist Vesalius, Copernicus, Fallopius, Fabrizio d'Aquapendente, Galileo Galilei, William Harvey, Pietro Pompanazzi, Reginald, later Cardinal Pohl, Scaliger, Tasso and Jan Zamoyski. It is also where, in 1678, Elena Lucrezia Cornaro Piscopia became the first woman in the world to graduate from university. The university hosts the oldest anatomy theater, built in 1594. The university also hosts the oldest botanical garden, 1545, in the world. The botanical garden Orto Botanico di Padova was founded as the garden of curative herbs attached to the university's faculty of medicine. It still contains an important collection of rare plants. The place of Padua in the history of art is nearly as important as its place in the history of learning. The presence of the university attracted many distinguished artists, such as Giotto, Fra Filippo Lippi and Donatello, and for native art there was the school of Francesco Squarcioni, once issued Montegna. Padua is also the birthplace of the celebrated architect Andrea Palladio, whose 16th-century villas country houses in the area of Padua, Venice, Vicenza and Treviso are among the most notable of Italy and they were often copied during the 18th and 19th centuries, and of Giovanni Battista Belzoni, adventurer, engineer and Egyptologist. The sculptor Antonio Canova produced his first work in Padua, one of which is among the statues of Prado della Valle. Presently a copy is displayed in the open air, while the original is in the Musei Civici. The Antonianum is settled among Prado della Valle, the Basilica of St. Anthony and the Botanic Garden. It was built in 1897 by the Jesuit Fathers and kept alive until 2002. During World War II, under the leadership of P. Messeri Rincaglia S.J., it became the center of the resistance movement against the Nazis. Indeed, it briefly survived P. Messeri's death and was sold by the Jesuits in 2004. Padua also plays host to the majority of Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare and in Much Ado About Nothing Benedict is named as Signor Benedict of Padua. Paolo de Poli, painter and enamelist, author of decorative panels and design objects, 15 times invited to the Venice Biennale was born in Padua. 
The electronic musician Tying Tiffany was also born in Padua. Demographics In 2007, there were 210,301 people residing in Padua, located in the province of Padua, Veneto, of whom 47.1% were male and 52.9% were female. Minors, children ages 18 and younger, totaled 14.87% of the population compared to pensioners who number 23.72%. This compares with the Italian average of 18. 06% minors, and 19.94% pensioners. The average age of Padua residents is 45 compared to the Italian average of 42. In the five years between 2002 and 2007, the population of Padua grew by 2.21%, while Italy as a whole grew by 3.85%. The current birth rate of Padua is 8.49 births per 1,000 inhabitants compared to the Italian average of 9.45 births. As of 2006, 90.66% of the population was Italian. The largest immigrant group comes from other European nations, the largest being Romanians, Moldovans, and Albanians, 5.14%, Sub-Saharan Africa 1.08%, and East Asia, 1.04%. The city is predominantly Roman Catholic, but due to immigration now has some Orthodox Christian, Muslim and Hindu followers. Government Since local government political reorganization in 1993, Padua has been governed by the City Council of Padua. Voters elect directly 33 councillors and the mayor of Padua every five years. The current mayor of Padua is Sergio Giordani, independent, supported by the PD, elected on 26 June 2017. This is a list of the mayors of Padua since 1946. Asterisk special prefectural commissioners, nominated after the majority of the members of the city council resigned in order to remove the mayor from the office. Consulates Padua hosts consulates for several nations, including those of Canada, Croatia, Ivory Coast, Peru, Poland, Switzerland and Uruguay. A consulate for South Korea is opening soon and a consulate for Moldova was opened on 1 August 2014. Economy The industrial area of Padova was created in the eastern part of the city in 1946. It is now one of the biggest industrial zones in Europe, having an area of 11 million sqm. The main offices of 1,300 industries are based here, employing 50,000 people. In the industrial zone, there are two railway stations, one fluvial port, three truck terminals, two highway exits and a lot of connected services, such as hotels, post offices and directional centers. Transport By car By car, there are two motorways, Autostrade in Italian, A4 Brescia Padova, connecting it to Verona, then to Brenner Pass, Innsbruck and Bavaria, and Milan, then Switzerland, Turin and France, A4 Padova Venezia, to Venice then Belluno, for Dolomites holiday resorts like Cortina Trieste and Tarvisio for Austria, Slovenia, Croatia and Eastern Europe, A13 Bologna Padova, to Ferrara and Bologna, then Central and South Italy. Roads connect Padua with all the large and small centers of the region. A motorway with more than 20 exits surrounds the city, connecting districts and the small towns of the surrounding region. By rail Padua has two railway stations open to passengers. The main station Stazione di Padova has 11 platforms and is sometimes incorrectly referred to as Padova Centrale. It is one of the biggest stations in Italy. More than 450 trains per day leave Padova. The station is used by over 20 million passengers per year. Other railway stations are Padova Ponte di Brenta, soon to be closed, Padova San Lazzaro, planned, Padova Campo di Mart, with no passenger service once used as a freight station which could become one of the stations of the Servizio Ferroviario Metropolitano Regionale. From Padova, high-speed trains connect to Milan, Rome, Bologna, Florence and Venice. One can reach Milan in 1 h and 51 minutes, Rome in 3 hours and 0 minutes and Venice in 20 minutes. 
There are also international day trains to Zurich and Munich, and overnight sleeper services to Paris and Dijon, Thelo, Munich and Vienna, Ob. The station was opened in 1842 when the service started on the first part of the Milan-Venice Railway, the Imperial Regia Ferrovia Ferdinandia, built from Padua to Marghera through Mestra. Porta Marghera is a major port of the Venetian area. Railways enthusiasts can visit the signal box A, Cabina A, preserved by the Societa Veneta Ferrovi, a society named after the former public works and railway company, based in Piazza Aramitani, in Padua, Association. By aeroplane Padua is approximately 50 kilometers 31 miles away from Venice Marco Polo Airport which is the nearest airport with regular commercial service. Padua is also serviced by the Verona Villafranca Airport, Treviso Airport and Bologna Guglielmo Marconi Airport. The Gino Allegri, or Aeroporto Seville di Padova. Gino Allegri is no longer served by regularly scheduled flights. Padua is, however, the home of one of Italy's four area control centers. Public transport Urban public transport includes public buses together with a new Translor guided tramway, connecting Albignasego, in the south of Padua, with Pontevagodarzir in the north of the city, thanks to the new line built in 2009, and private taxis. The city center is partly closed to vehicles, except for residents and permitted vehicles. There are some car parks surrounding the district. In this area, as well, there are some streets and squares restricted to pedestrian and bicycle use only. Padua has approximately 40 bus lines, which are served by new buses purchased in 2008-9. The Veneto region is building a regional rail line -like system, around the city with 15 new stations. Its name will be SFMR and it will reach the province of Venice. Statistics The average amount of time people spend commuting with public transit in Padova, Vicenza e Verona, for example to and from work, on a weekday is 46 minutes. 5% of public transit riders, ride for more than 2 hours every day. The average amount of time people wait at a stop or station for public transit is 13 minutes, while 30% of riders wait for over 20 minutes on average every day. The average distance people usually ride in a single trip with public transit is 4.7 km, while 4% travel for over 12 km in a single direction. Sports Padua is the home of Calcio Padova, an association football team that plays in Italy's Serie B, and who played 16 Serie A championships, last two in 1995 and 1996, but the previous 14 between 1929 and 1962, the Petrarca Padova rugby union team, winner of 12 national championships, all between 1970 and 2011, and two national cups, and now plays in the top 12 league, and the Pallavolo Padova volleyball club, once called Petrarca Padova as well, which plays in the Italian second division, A2, and who won a CEV Cup in 1994. Basketball, cycling, Padua has been for several years home of the famous Gyro del Veneto, rowing, two teams among the best ones in Italy, Canodieri Padova and Padova Canataggio, horseback riding and swimming are popular sports too. The venues of these teams are, Stadio Uganio for football and athletics, about 32,000 seats, Stadio Plebiscito for rugby union, about 9,000 seats, Palazzetto dello Sport San Lazzaro for volleyball and basketball, about 5,000 seats, and has just been restored, Ipodromo Breda, La Padovanal for horse races. The old and glorious Stadio Appiani, which hosted up to 21,000 people, presently reduced to 10,000 for security reasons 20 years ago, and near to Prado della Valle in the city central area, is almost abandoned and is to be restored. A small ice stadium for skating and hockey is about to be completed, with about 1,000 seats. Since 2012 the city also has its own Gaelic football club, Padova Gaelic Football. Later that year they had the honor of taking part in the first official GAA match in Italy when they played Ascaro Rovigo GFC in the Adige Cup. The team colors are red and white. 
The F1 racing driver Ricardo Patrese, runner-up 1992, third place in 1989 and 1991, held the world record for having started the most Formula One races, beaten by Rubens Barrichello during the 2008 season, was born and lives in Padova. The racing driver Alex Zanardi also lives in Padova. The Bergamasco brothers were also born in Padova, as well as Bordolami, Marcato and Leonardo Giraldini, of the Italian rugby national team. All of them started their careers in Petrarca Padova. Well-known footballers from Padua were Francesco Toldo, who was born here, and Alessandro Del Piro, who started his professional career in the Calcio Padova. Governance Town twinning Padua is twinned with Notable people Livy, 59 BC to 17 AD. Historian. Anthony of Padua, 1195 to 1231. Franciscan priest, saint and doctor of the church. Francesco Zabarella, 1360 to 1417. Cardinal and canonist. Mayor Katzenellenbegin, 1482 to 1565. Chief Rabbi of Padua, authority on Talmudic and rabbinical matters. Rizzanti, 1496-1542. Writer, playwright and actor. Angelo Biolco aka Rusanti, 1502-1542. Commedia dell'arte actor. Andrea Palladio, 1508-1580. Architect. Jacopo Zabarella, 1533-1589. Professor of Philosophy and Science. Giovanni Antonio Magini, 1555-1617. Astronomer, astrologer, cartographer, and mathematician. Tiziano Aspetti, 1557-1606. Sculptor. Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642. Physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher, father of modern science. Stefano Landi, 1586-1639. Early music composer, known for songs such as Tamai Gran Tempo, Ogolin and Pascagla della Vita. Moses Chaim Catalan, d. 1661, Jewish-Italian poet. Bartolomeo Cristofora, 1655-1731, inventor of the piano. Giovanni Battista Morgogni, 1682-1771, anatomist, father of modern anatomical pathology. Giuseppe Tartini, 1692-1770, Italian composer, violinist and music theorist. Giovanni Benedetto Platti, possibly 1697-1763, oboist and composer. Giovanni Battista Belzoni, 1778-1823. Explorer and archaeologist Ippolito Nievo, 1831-1861. Writer Arrigo Boito, 1842-1918. Poet, journalist, novelist, librettist and composer. Johann von Palavicini, 1848-1941. Austro-Hungarian diplomat. Tullio Levi Savita, 1873-1941. Mathematician. Giuseppe Valentini, 1900-1979. Priest and historian, one of the founders and secretary-general of the Royal Institute of the Albanian Studies. Blessed Elisa Angela Meneguzzi, 1901-1941. A Roman Catholic professed religious of the Sisters of St. Francis de Sales. Paolo de Poli, 1905-1996. Painter and designer. Antonio Negri, born 1933. Political philosopher. Claudio Simone, 1934-2018. Orchestral conductor. Lucia Valentini Tirani, 1946-1998. Operatic mezzo-soprano. A small square close to the Teatro Verdi was named in her honor, Piazzetta Lucia Valentini Tirani. 
Humberto Menon, born 1949. Painter. Novella Caligaris, born 1954. Swimmer and Olympic medalist. Ricardo Patrese, born 1954. Racing driver. Massimo Carlotto, born 1956. Writer and playwright. Carlo Mazzacarotti, 1956-2014. Film director and screenwriter. Maurizio Catalan, born 1960. Artist. Kenny Random, born 1971. Artist and writer. Francesco Toldo, born 1971. Footballer. Giorgio Pantano, born 1979. Racing driver. Mirko Bergamasco, born 1983. Rugby union player. Andrea Marcato, born 1983. Rugby union player. Chiara Galeazzo, born 1986. Singer. See also Padua Metropolitan Area Province of Padua Roman Catholic Diocese of Padua Tangenziale di Padova Via Anelli Wall Hotel Terme Milipini Diocesan Museum of Padua, Italy References Bibliography External links Official website Botanical Garden, Orto Botanico, Padua from UNESCO Tram di Padova, Public Tram Weather Padova